This is reading number nine. Number nine. Anyways, haiku. Even at this, um, still on the pulse of nature. We had previously read, When they fall just as they fall, garden grasses. <coughs> That's the Rokan we know of, who is the quiet, hermit, Buddhist monk type guy. Remember he lived in the woods and <laughs> came down and played with the children or something? Mm -hmm. And then we had read, Mountains darken, robbing the scarlet from maple leaves, Busan. Then our new poem is, The Moon Speeds On. It's interesting that they, when, as they fall, they, when they fall, as they fall, garden grasses, because it seems like people don't fall the same way, and, and um, maybe mm. we should learn from them. When they fall, just as they fall, garden grasses. Are you saying they fall more elegantly than people? <laughs> no, no, maybe there is only not all that emotional, yeah. uh, the emotional despair. You know, the grass fall. has more zen than we do. <laughs> we don't know, actually, so we suppose they don't. Well, Rokan is very Zen. He's a Soto Zen Buddhist monk. Mm -hmm. We suppose that they don't emotionally suffer when they fall, but they may, they might, because see, when the sun comes up, with what power they stretch to reach the sun. They fall, they just fall. Mm. Mm. So. It seems we like this poem and seem to obsess over it. Huh? All right. <clears throat> So now we have the moon. <coughs> the moon speeds on. The treetop still holding rain. Basho. The moon's bright. The moon speeds on. The treetop still holding rain. Basho. A rock against the moon sits big. A rock against the moon sits big. It sits, it feels it's big. It's closer. It sits big against the moon. Now, this is, we're getting these, trying to discover these new poets here. Sen, Sen, Sien, Sen, Sui. Well, it must be metaphorical to some situation, you know. See, Somebody Zen can Sui. be very great and being far away, nobody sees him. He's very little. Um, what, the rock? Sits the big? Poem. The poem can be metaphorical. What do you mean? A rock sits big against the moon? Against because the, it's closer. A rock against the moon. We say you see, look at the direction of the moon, and there is a rock in front of you. Wow. And it looks big, but you know that the moon is bigger. Yet the rock may look bigger. So, well, metaphorically, you can think of people like that. Mm -hmm. Somebody great, somewhere far away. You hear the okay. rest of them. So, you're missing the rest in a way. All right, Sen, Sien San Sui, somewhat modern, 1884 to 1976. Fairly new. His house is destroyed in World War II. Uh, a little tidbit. Yeah. The bright moon out from the sleeve of the scarecrow. Now, remember we had... Uh -huh. First we had a grasshopper and the uh -huh. scarecrow. Now we have the bright moon out of the sleeve of the scarecrow. Now this is un unexpected. It's Isha. Uh -huh. Usually, uh, Basho's the moon guy. Mm -hmm. Of course, everybody's writing about the moon. <coughs> the bright moon out from the sleeve of the scarecrow. Mm. Mm -hmm. They must have had scarecrows about at the time. Yeah, a lot. Isha. Mm -hmm. Now we have fallen leaves fall on each other. Rain beats on the rain. Interesting. Yeah, well, it's interesting to look at it. It is true. 
KT. All KT. KT. Fallen leaves fall on each other and rain beats on the rain. So we have the leaves falling on each other and the rain falling on the rain. Mm -hmm. And KT is a so called Bhaktabhasho poet. Somehow it's like also our anger falls on us in a way. He's a back to Basho. He is so. an, he is like Tege, Tegi. We had read a Tegi guy. They're very metaphorical at this point. The back to Basho, Te, Te is. Which means they had Basho's poetry, then they started writing it differently and making it commercial and comical. Then the people rejected that and said, we're going back to Basho, so they became back to Basho poets. Because they were mm -hmm. rejecting the trivial rubbish being written in commercial markets. <laughs> mm -hmm. Blown from the West. <laughs> Some type of poetry you can read it once and be pleasant, but the poetry that you can read it and read again and again, it's really pleasant. Loan from the West, collecting in the East, falling leaves. Blown from the West, this way, which way is West? From this way to this way, collecting in the East. Well, that makes sense, I guess. <laughs> what, you want it not to make sense? You have to be uh, very intelligent. To it's all about this. making sense. Falling leaves, Busan. Busan. He's always correct. Black. It's like Busan is like black, you know, black is always correct. Busan is always correct. Why is he correct? They all correct. No, I wouldn't say so. Yeah, show me one that is not. All right, we'll see. We'll look. The <laughs> old pond's frog also growing old. <laughs> Fallen leaves. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, he's probably thinking of Basho's frog, and he's saying, the old pond's frog also growing old. Mm -hmm. Fallen leaves. And which is Busan. Of course, Busan's always correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I made that up. <laughs> what do you know? And the leaves are Busan. all dodged to fall. I don't know. I don't know if he's back to Basho or who he is. How come we don't understand him? We know somebody and then have to re address it. The next poet is uh, a back to Basho poet. His name is Tege. Tan Tege, T A I G I, who writes Haike, H A I K A I. 1709 to 1771. He's part of the back to Basho. Sweeping and then not sweeping the fallen leaves. Sweeping and then not sweeping the fallen leaves. Tege. It's like the leaves in front of our house. Sweeping and then the not sweeping. What is he playing a Zen game here? Yeah. Sometimes you sweep them, sometimes you don't sweep them. Okay. All right, Tege. Very squarely setting its buttocks down. The pumpkin, very cool. squarely, setting its buttocks down. The pumpkin. Who is that? Who's the poet? Pumpkin. Pumpkin. The pumpkin, like the squirt, like the, hmm. like the. It's an animal, like the squirt. No, pumpkin. Oh, the pumpkin. A plant, oh, the like pumpkin. Halloween. Oh, the pumpkin, I'm sorry, I know, I know. <laughs> the way you write the pumpkin. Pump, pumpkin. Pumpkin. <laughs> you write the pumpkin, and I say, who is Yeah, that? your pronunciation of English is quite strange. Pumpkin. Yeah. Pumpkin. 
I should speak like the Queen. <laughs> I think I should just go back to talking like the Queen of England. Mm -hmm. She says pumpkin. Um, of pumpkin. I don't know what she's. I'm just saying that technically. But if I speak Midland, which is Midland English, like Ohio and Chicago, what's wrong with pumpkin. that? Pumpkin. 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 We're <laughs> splitting hairs over this poem. Over issues of language. <laughs> Sorry, this um, big pumpkin. One of those round ones. Well, it says very squarely setting its, setting its butt down, the pumpkin. You could see that, though, the way they, uh -huh. the pumpkin has a, a square sort of butt, uh -huh. anyways. Uh -huh. You could see it. It looks like something sitting down in a way. Uh -huh. Do you ever see the bottom of a pumpkin? No. It looks like somebody's bottom. Don't I? Very squarely. I don't want to imagine somebody's bottom. And the poet is, guess, you can never guess. He's a, he's kind of modern. He's a, actually, he's famous. Natsumi Sosiki. He's a, ever heard of Sosiki? He's a novelist. Hmm. A famous okay. Japanese novelist. And he's on the, he was on the thousand dollar yen note. He just happened to write haiku. Hmm. He's a writer. And, we have to go to Japan to investigate. Mm -hmm. Very squarely setting its butt down. If the, the pumpkin. if the pumpkin starts sitting on their butt behind in Japan, <laughs> the pumpkin sitting on its butt. Mm -hmm. You have to it's investigate buttocks. that. Buttocks. Yeah, but they sit here on their butts. I'm joking. <laughs> they have a stem here, right? And they have I'm a I'm joking. <laughs> you don't get a joke. Okay. A like big investigation. We have cultural differences. I think, <laughs> oh, yeah. Between Greece and Japan and the U.S. And America. Mm -hmm. We need a global cultural forum. <laughs> I'm getting everything, though. <clears throat> the autumn wind. Would you give me a chocolate? Great. You ate all the chocolate. The autumn wind takes the shape of pompous grass. Hmm. That makes sense. The autumn wind takes the shape of pompous grass. No, it's not the pompous grass. Grass. Well, you're not going to see the wind other than in the grass. No, because it makes it inclined. Mm. That's Keechin, K I G I N. Who is he? What's pompous grass? Pompous grass. Just grass, I don't know. It's the meadow grass, probably. Hmm. Maybe I should take my phone and check it out, huh? You can look, get your phone and look up things while I'm talking. You can be the re reference department. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We have like a haiku party where everyone has their phones and they, we could have a phone haiku party. Mm -hmm. but, and then we have haiku jeopardy where you have to guess which poet it is. Mm -hmm. How do you say P-A-M-P-A-S. Here's another one with pompous in it. Listen. To passing autumn, the pompous grass mm. waves. The pompous grass. Yeah, nice. To passing autumn, the pompous grass waves goodbye, goodbye. Shire, shire. It's tall grass, eh? It, did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. The passing autumn, to passing autumn, the pompous grass waves goodbye, goodbye. Mm -hmm. Shire. Mm. Look all the different types they have. Beautiful. Eh? Uh. Look Art up. nine. Look 